Hi everybody, so if you watched the video 1936, you might have got the idea that solar thermal was dead, particularly in contrast to solar photovoltaic. Well, far from it. Solar thermal is incredibly active as a research area and it's really easy to do. All you actually need is some black plastic pipe and the sun will shine on it, absorb the heat and heat the water and that is solar thermal. But the height of the technology is this. This is an evacuated solar thermal tube. The job of this is to take the sun's energy and its light and turn it from shortwave to longwave. Longwave is heat and if you look down there you'll see how red that gets because it's taking the sunlight in that black coating, changing it to heat and reflecting it into the inside of this and it's a vacuum tube so it's got this silvery bit at the bottom. This silvery bit is called a getter, usually it's something like barium but any reactive metal will do it so you can use aluminium, sodium, potassium, anything but it's usually barium. Its job is to absorb any extra oxygen between these two glass walls to make sure that a vacuum is kept. Now these things well, there's no moving parts, they last virtually forever. They've got a lifespan of expected somewhere around about 25 years plus, so they last a long time doing that job. And this coating, the black coating that you can see, that's magnetron sputtered. Basically, it fires metal ions using something very similar to your microwave oven to coat those ions on that glass. That is multi-layer and its job to take the sunlight and turn it into heat. This is a fantastic piece of equipment and surprisingly enough this which is uh, 58 millimeters round by 500 millimeters long was 10 pounds. It's crazy cheap. The efficiency of these things is actually crazy. This is somewhere between 94 and 96 percent efficient, that is it takes that sunlight and changes 94 to 96 percent of it into heat. And you don't often see them used just like this, this is a conversion tube, what you see is a piece of copper pipe going as a U, going in and out, see it cold water in, hot water out, that's the very basic of it, but you can use something called a heat pipe. Now a heat pipe is just a bit of copper tubing with a bulb at the top filled with a liquid that evaporates at a low temperature, so something like isopropanol alcohol or even better acetone and you can make them yourself really easily and we've made them. All you do is take a piece of copper pipe, cap one end, put some acetone in it, heat it gently when the acetone is steaming, crimp the end, let it cool and you've got yourself a heat pipe. Now what happens is the liquid at the bottom is cold, when it gets hot it evaporates into the top as hot gas. That hot bit is put into a container of water and of course it starts to heat the water, it gets cold and drips back down to the bottom and it continues that as a heat pump with no moving parts. So equally the lifespan of a heat pipe which is also incredibly efficient is years, it's a huge amount of time. Normally those heat pipes are rested on a little aluminium fin to keep them in the center of the tube, so you see this sort of stuff all over the place in hot countries like Australia. Here in the UK for some reason they're not nearly as popular as photovoltaics and I would contend that's because they're a bit more trouble. Now you can just buy these and as I say they range between sort of 10 and 20 pounds depending on the length, you get a whole load of them, stick them on your roof and you're going to have hot water. The idea of making as much hot water as you want of course appeals to me and I could get a load and stick them on the roof or I could do something a bit more fun that's more useful to me because I drink a ton of this stuff and my kettle is three kilowatts so every time I turn that on I burn the electricity. Now we have done this before. We did this before by using a bit of drainage pipe. We're going to make a solar thermal kettle. But of course we've got the 3D printers now, the filament printers, so although you can do that by hand, we can do a prettier job of it with a 3D printer. So I've printed off a whole load of 3D parts and of course it's in Tinkercad, the link is in the description at the bottom and anybody who wants these parts is more than welcome to them, just go there and print them off yourself and we're going to build that solar kettle using the 3D parts, of which the most <laughs> 
complicated bit is the base unit here. Now, these kettles don't work particularly well if they're upright. You need them put them at an angle. Here in the UK, because we're in the Northern Hemisphere, that angle is 45 degrees summer and autumn, 20 degrees in the summer, sorry, 45 degrees spring and autumn, 20 degrees in the summer, and 60 degrees in the winter. So I've printed off a foot, and when I put that foot on there like that, that is held at 20 degrees, and it's 20 degrees because it's summer. Now I can put my thing in there. So with my tube in there, it's already looking like a solar kettle. Now, it does have a top section, here we go, that goes right there. And between those two is going to be a hinge, because this works better if we can fold out a reflector so that the sun will hit the reflector and, of course, get reflected back in here. So it doesn't only get the direct sunlight on there, it gets the reflected sunlight from the back. In order to do that, we need a reflector. Now, a reflector can be anything you want. So a bit of shiny aluminium rolled into a curl would be quite nice. What I'm going to use is this stuff. This is 110 guttering. So it's really easy to get hold of and it's sawed to length to go on the hinge between those two there. It will be closed for, for carrying it and then you'll be able to open it to reflect the sun into the um, solar kettle. But of course it needs a hinge. The hinge section is here from the Tinkercad file and it goes together like that to make the hinge and we put a bit of 8mm threaded bar down there to complete that hinge. But that is anything but a reflector right now. So I want to show you this stuff. Now I'm not getting paid to do this, I bought this and I discovered it a while ago. It's a Rust-Oleum paint product called Mirror Effect. Now, mirror paints have been very disappointing. This stuff is astonishing actually how easy and well it forms a mirror. So I'm going to spray paint the inside of these with mirror effect to create a couple of curved mirrors. And that's what that stuff looks like. Now you could probably get the same effect pretty much if you just stuck some aluminium down there but it does give a really nice mirror finish and it's a piece of cake. Now you might have noticed into this base unit I've put these three bars. They're 43 centimetres, 8 millimetre bar. I bought them down with a cat nut and a nut and then this central spacer because this bit, the tube, actually just goes in there and rests in there. So that's going to rest in there like that. Obviously we need to put these onto some kind of hinge which is... There we go. Exactly what that is. You find two parts, 43 centimeter, 8 millimeter bar, makes those hinges. And this is just the wings here. It's got a slight curve to it, and the wing glues on there like that. So we glue them on there, and then we can put this cap piece on. That big hole fits on there like that, and there's a corresponding big hole at the bottom that fits in there like that, and then this top piece screws onto there. So they're glued on and they've got the bar back in and <laughs> now they close up. That's really cool actually. Okay, so we fitted our reflectors and they close up rather nicely. And I put this on top, that part there, because that part is the bit that takes a swivel foot. Because you'll notice as we're building it, it wants to do that. Now it's set at 20 degrees and I have this part here and I put a bit of aluminium bar on it because that goes like that to stop the whole thing tilting over and of course to do that we have a peg with a hole in it. The peg goes in there and then that goes in the peg. So the last bit is the lid. Now the lid's got this indentation in it because I bought this, it's a thermometer. And the thermometer goes up to 120 degrees and goes through the hole in the middle and the lid goes on so we can see how hot our water is going. And of course when we're not using it, we can close it up and when we want to use it, we can open them up. Now, there's a couple of things I might actually do with that to improve it. One would maybe be an adjustment for that so we could adjust that to a, a sort of position that we want. But you can buy these things, they're actually about 60, 65 pounds on Amazon and they're made out of plastic so the material is going to be good. I did put a piece of string right there to stop that collapsing any further. A nice adjustment won't be on there to put a block on it so that it would only open that far but that is the kettle ready to go. Let's fill it up with some water see if we can brew a coffee. I filled it up with water, we'll put the cap on with the thermometer to read it and then we'll expose it to the sun and see how long it takes to heat that up. 
<laughs> okay, that actually worked. It made me a nice cup of hot coffee and probably a couple of cups in there. Now, it's in line with what I said about solar because this does boil the water, but it takes about 80 minutes to do it. So it's not in instant. It's not like flicking on your kettle, but it really does work. And I checked the price of them. They're actually about 100, 120 pounds, which is crazy money. And there's no way I spent that on building this. It was fun to build anyway. This metal coating, the black coating that you can see, that's usually a transition metal. So something like tungsten or cobalt or nickel in a ceramic. And as I say, it's magnetron coated. So it's a pretty technical piece of kit that really does the job. The problem is not particularly quickly, but if you set it up and you've got a bit of patience, then you're no longer using a three kilowatt kettle. I found it a lot of fun actually, and it's a nice piece of kit. So if you fancy giving it a go, there is a particularly awesome use for solar thermal, especially if you like as much coffee as I do. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.